Brawl Adiola. Hello, hello, can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? Koyo, move closer. Do you know that the last episode, the audio was bad? What do you mean you didn't notice? How can you not notice? This is how you play with your job and you're getting paid. Have I ever owed you salary? Ever? As in never ever. See my job already, my job already, my son will for you. are getting paid. So why are you playing with your job? I beg my people, eh? Please, no vex. Please let me know if the audio is okay in this one. Otherwise, Kaido may have to finally show his face too, so he can say goodbye to the people. She cannot. By the way, some of you are yet to subscribe. I don't get it. I need my glasses to see the faces of those that are watching this show without subscribing. Ah, God knows your address. Ah, my brother, my sister, you are watching, you are enjoying it, but you refuse to subscribe. It's okay. Help my market you now. Uh -huh. If you were not invited to Buhari's wedding, please don't take offense. You know, I was not invited either, you know. Maybe because there was no wedding. <laughs> Some people can have so much time to make up such a story and even design design a fake wedding invitation. People have time, and on top of that, there was a video about two years ago of Aisha Buari, the first lady, talking with some people. I don't know what argument was going on, but only for people to start circulating that video that she was locked inside Asorok on the wedding day. <laughs> We have over 200 soldiers guarding us. 200 policemen guarding us. Why do you have to lock this door? What for? What for? Enough is enough. Let me know when you are leaving this place. That video you saw with my people, she wasn't locked in. I mean, you could even see other people inside besides the person that was filming. But for some reason, even though the story is fake, some people are celebrating on social media that Buhari was about to marry another wife. They were like, yes, Aisha Buhari is too full of herself. It sounds her right. Buhari is finally putting her in her place. I said, what kind of mentality is this? And how can you hate a woman for speaking out about her husband's bad governance? Uh -uh. She doesn't hide it that Bari is not the one in charge, it is the cabal. No offense, Mr. President, but even your wife knows who's in charge. I mean, this woman is siding with the people. She also exposed a major fraud, the 500 billion naira social investment program. Remember that some people just want a puppet first lady, you know, somebody that can be controlled. People like that are praying for you on the mountain of miracle. You're okay, you know what I mean? Now, speaking of controlling people, let's talk about that BBC documentary, you know, Sex for Grace, gay, gay. First of all, thank you to BBC. Eh? This kind of story is long overdue. Huge shout out, by the way, to that reporter, Kiki Modi, and all the ladies who went undercover, and especially all the victims who spoke with BBC about their experience. Thank you so much, because I can't imagine how you felt. But if you haven't seen this, the title is Sex for Great. It's on YouTube. Some lecturers at the University of Lagos and at the University of Ghana were exposed for sexually patronizing female students. First of all, how is it possible that the University of Lagos a whole University of Lagos has a place where lecturers hang out with female students to caress them and the university will not know about it. You can't tell me they didn't know about it. They even call the place the cold room. The window is tainted. Black, for God's sake. You cannot tell me that the school doesn't know that this place exists. And that pastor, uh, that pastor lecturer, Boniface, who tried to commit suicide, by the way, after the video came out, the man needs to name the other lecturers that are doing this because we all know that him and uh, Dr. Samuel Oladipo, who were both exposed, they are not the only ones that are doing this. And it's not just the others. When I was in school, so called student union you know, president, you need to come and see Iru Itu Tongpa. You need to see how they go after girls. And if you don't want to date the student union you know, president, they know how to send thugs after you. Even some couples will sleep with the students that they're supposed to teach. By the way, this issue goes beyond our universities and polytechnics. So many of our politicians are doing this same thing. Even right now, I mean, go to uh, couples orientation camps, especially in Abuja. Most of these senators, their hands are not clean. So many of the ministries in Nigeria, in fact, sexual harassment is a daily thing in Nigeria. I remember going to Nigeria for the 2015 inauguration and we had to get press passes. We entered those government offices and and nobody sent us as in they would just look at us like okay but a colleague who is very very light-skinned as soon as she enters like this i'm telling you they're like ah fine girl what do you want and right there they will be asking for her number they have no shame no jumomo in front of everybody these are elderly men who have wives and children at home i'm glad to see that we're finally talking about these things in fact this 2019 has been a year to remember in nigeria and ghana as well because i heard that the documentary shook ghana as well. Mm-hmm. Charlie, they 
they expose them all. In Western words, do you know that professors to some degree are the ones that are afraid of students because their performance will be graded by their students at the end of each semester? First of all, there are so many schools in these countries, like here in the US, we have so many schools that schools are actively trying to recruit students. Some schools would even go to secondary schools, high schools, to advertise themselves and offer scholarships to bright students or athletic students. Also, the approach here in America is that the student is a customer who is paying for a service. So they want to make sure that they please the students because the customer is always right. So the student must feel like he or she is getting the worth of their money. So it's ridiculous that all these Nigerian schools where sexual harassment is, has been going on for decades, these students paid. They paid though. It's not like they are getting a free education, yet some professor will decide to sit on their results because they refuse to sleep with him. The same thing with the way that so many of our schools go on strike. It's ridiculous. It's hard for me to even think about how ridiculous that is that the students will pay and then the school will go on strike. By the way, I want to talk to parents who may be watching me. Please talk to your daughters about topics like this. Um, when this BBC video came out, I heard one woman saying that, well, the girls are the ones throwing themselves at these professors. And you know, that broke my heart because I'm like, someone is 50 years old. It's not like he doesn't know what he's doing. He's married, pastoring a church. Yet you say that a 17 year old was the one that threw herself on him, let's stop blaming victims and shaming victims in Nigeria. And if your daughters should open up about what they are facing, please don't blame them, don't shut them up. That's why many of them don't talk. You need to encourage them to open up and don't be quick to blame them. There's no reason why a lecturer should be permitted to have a romantic relationship with a student that he teaches unless they are married, you get what I'm saying? So it doesn't matter if the student threw herself at him or not. It is the same thing with a staff and a supervisor, which is why in other parts of the world, what they do is they put systems in place to minimize things like this. And that is what our emphasis should be, even in Nigeria. Because even here in America, with all the laws and systems in place, it still happens. In fact, some female teachers are caught having sexual relationship with high school students. Now, the only thing that minimizes it in any society is law and order. Passing the bill is the first step. And I'm glad that Buari says that he will revisit the sexual harassment bill. Hopefully, they will pass it. But making sure that those who report harassment are protected is another thing that we need to work on and we really need to work on that that's why most people don't talk and then making sure that the accused are also given a fair hearing is also important because not everybody is guilty sexual harassment in Nigeria by the way is so endemic that it's hard for us to talk about the other aspect of it because some people may think we're trying to minimize the issue but the truth is there is also the other side of this university sexual harassment and that is the side where some female students who do not want to study think that they can use their bodies to get by and this happens a lot in so many schools in Nigeria not just that some students from rich families also believe that they can pay lecturers to pass this is not just a female student problem some male students also try to buy their way through college and I know that doesn't just happen in Nigeria even here in America that happens but if you hear of the experience of some visiting professors who live uh, in America for example and they went to Nigeria to teach briefly some of them have been approached by female students who told them Oga what will it take for you to pass me in this course because I cannot make it, I'm ready, just tell me what it is. And again, I'm not undermining the fact that in most cases, this comes from the lecturers, but a significant number of women have also believed now that they can get whatever they want uh, from lecturers or maybe from their bosses at work by using their bodies. Knowing fully well that there will always be men willing to take that offer. I think one of the reasons that some girls have that mindset that they can use their body is because they've seen that over the years, Years, a lot of lecturers patronize girls sexually so they're like oh there's always a way which is why it's important to put in place strong laws that would minimize this now if you're a lady and a professor is asking you to sleep with him please don't please do not do it in this social media age you can actually expose such a lecturer not just for your sake but for the sake of the girls that would come after you and pass through this same lecturer this has been happening now for a long time and because they were not exposed 
thousands of ladies have been victims. So if you don't speak out, you are letting it continue because after he's done with you, somebody else will come after you and who knows who the next victim might be. So please speak up. At the same time, if you're a lecturer and a female student is asking you, oh God, what will it take for you to pass me in this course? I'm ready, just tell me where you want us to meet. Please expose her because that's the way to stop those who have now believed that they can use their bodies to get good grades. Again, the reason that many girls have that mindset, I think, is because they've seen that so many male lecturers prey on female students. Uh, Pastor Boniface's church disowned him, Foursquare Church, they disowned him, and Unilag shut down the cold room. But no lecturer has been charged. I'm glad that Buari said that he would revisit the sexual harassment bill, but one thing that worries me is the attitude of we the young people about this issue. No offense to Big Brother Ninja, but I thought that this is something that we would protest about if people would march on the streets because of a Big Brother housemates. I thought this would be a bigger issue to march about. I'm really afraid for my generation because as much as we abuse those in government right now we're not doing better in fact some of us would do worse than all this baba baba that we are criticizing if we are more concerned about big brother than things that are affecting our daughters our girlfriends our nieces our neighbors i mean it's likely we all know someone who has been a victim of sexual harassment it's time that we start caring about things that actually matter but again you guys now don't know much guess what i'm just giving you a rope. Meanwhile, I've seen this video for some time now, but I've been in shock since that time because I'm like, in 2018, how can this happen in Nigeria? More than 300 captives kept in chains were rescued this week in the northern Nigerian city of Kanduna. Most of them children, some of them as young as five, were found in a building that was supposed to be an Islamic school. Police said they'd been tortured, starved and sexually abused. Three men and young boys chained and served some of them for years in what is supposed to be an Islamic school in Kaduna. This place is neither a rehab or an Islamic school because you can see it with yourself. Some of them were even chained. They were used to humanize. The victims also claim they are forced into daily Quranic recitations in addition to being subjected to sexual molestation. Previously any attempt to escape attracts severe punishment. They used to hang people up there, in the next, the next um, building there, they used to hang people. How did this happen for so long and no one knew about it? Or is it that they kept quiet? And did you hear the stories of some of the victims? They used to beat us even when we go to observe our prayers. The man has so many kings, he uses in flogging us every time. I'm 14 years old. Doctor. Hassan Yusuf, yeah. Doctor, are you a medical doctor? PhD, energy economics. Okay. Yeah. Why are you here? I decided I became a Christian because I spent 16 years in the UK. I married there. So I got back to Nigeria to come and settle up with my family. And uh, the extended family came and told these people that I became a Christian. I've converted. I'm trying to convert my children to Christians and the rest. I just found myself here one night, one morning about two years ago. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. Talk about the humanizing people. Give respect to that man for still keeping it together despite all that he's been through. My fear is how do we know that this is the only place that such is happening in Nigeria? However, the operator of the home has a different story. He claims that parents brought their children to him for rehabilitation. He also denies all allegations of molestation and explains that those in chains are the stubborn ones. All we do in the center is teach people Islam. All those allegations of torture, dehumanization and homosexuality are false and mere allegations. Some people argue for Quranic schools, Ilekewu, but when you look at what goes on in so many of these Ilekewus today in Nigeria, the ones where the kids are left to live with the priest, where they don't come back home, you will be shocked. You know these children that we call our manjeris in Nigeria, it's as if we as a society, not just our government, it's as if we don't really care of what becomes of them tomorrow. You know, I was in Kano in July of this year, and one night we went out looking for roasted fish. I had that roasted fish is really nice in Kano. And where we parked, that was how all these small, small boys came to beg for money. And I was shocked. I wanted to start crying. Because first of all, 
door. I'm like, it's late at night. They shouldn't be on the street. I'm talking about little, little boys. Secondly, I was shocked to hear that that's what they do every day, all day. Why do we turn blind eyes to this? These boys are not getting an education. That's a problem. And do you know that Nigeria has the highest number of out-of-school children in the whole world? More than 13 million children. That is more than the population of Denmark. More than the population of Norway or Finland or Ireland or Sweden. And out of these 13 million, do you know that more than 9 million are Almanjeri boys in northern Nigeria? We need to care about this because there is fire on the mountain. These children are not getting an education. Not only that, many of them are being used as sex slaves. Men are sleeping with these boys. And they are also being used to, to make money. They will send them on the street to go and collect money. And apparently when they go on the street to collect money like that, the money belongs to the priest. This is exploitation. This is slavery. To my shock that night, I was told that the money I gave these boys, that they will go and deliver it to the priest. Even though I told them to go and buy food with it. My friends told me, no they won't. They will give it to the priest. Apparently, many of these priests would beat them up if they don't come back home with money. What do you think would happen in the future when these guys grow up? Why do you think Boko Haram, for example, can easily recruit people? Politicians also use them as thugs. They're ready to die because it's like, what are they living for? But who is really benefiting from Almanjeris? If we don't take care of this, someday it will take care of us. I'd like to give a huge shout out, by the way, to an organization called Almanjeri Child Rights Initiative in Nigeria. They are fighting to end the Almanjeri child abuse in Nigeria. Their argument is that let these kids attend normal schools they can learn quran in normal schools not to go and live with priests who abuse them let them get real education they can also learn the quran as they are getting it this organization is trying to hold the government accountable they want the government to care about these children and stop turning blind eyes and also they are trying to hold communities accountable about almanjeri children a lot of parents actually take their children to these almanjeri schools and it's like what kind of future do you want for them i'm talking about kids as young as even four year olds children beg for money should not be a normal thing. Please visit their website to see how you can partner with them. Find them on Instagram, on Facebook, and on Twitter. Their founder is Abubaka Abdullahi, and I had the privilege of meeting one of their members when I was in Kano, Mohamed Sabo Kiana. Millions of these children have to beg every day before they eat. They live in some of the worst conditions imaginable. They lack access to healthcare, sanitation, clean water. The most important, they are abused to, um, they are exposed to abuse and danger that no child should be exposed to. Most importantly, they are out of school. And because they are out of school, they are condemned to menial jobs at adulthood. They need our support because uh, like Mohammed said at the UN, and I'm glad that they are shedding light on this, even at the UN. If you don't care about these children, their future part is already laid out. It leads to poverty. And you know, when there's poverty, there will be increasing crime rate. And don't think it will not come to your backyard because it is in northern Nigeria. No, it will. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to Botswana, a tourist from New Zealand who was caught drunk driving was arrested. He was fined 3,000 Botswana Pula and he was banned from driving in Botswana for a whole year. 25 year old Harrison McLean was driving a Toyota Land Cruiser when police stopped him and found out that he was drunk. You know why I love this story? Because Botswana is setting example for us other African countries to stop treating, especially white skinned foreigners, as if they are gods. As if they are gods. Amen, somebody. Um, I don't know if something like this can happen in Nigeria yet for them to arrest a white foreigner and ban him from driving for a whole year. Like, for real, Botswana doesn't play. I imagine that it will be hard for foreigners to go to Botswana and take advantage of them like it's happening in so many African countries. But I may be wrong. So if you're from Botswana, let me know. Let me hear from you in the comment section below. You guys not know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to Uganda, did you guys hear that the government wants to start killing gay people? I don't get it. I'm like, I don't, I don't understand. There's like a whole misplacement of priorities going on right here. Museveni, Museveni is confused, no offense sir, but you really are. Why is this still the president is what I don't understand. The other time he had issues with how people should have sex, specifically oral sex. <laughs> He had issues with it. Why would a president be going on national TV to tell people how to have sex? <laughs> the man is bored. And now he wants to be killing gay people. How does that help anybody at all? And you know something? 
some people are celebrating that they want to be killing gay people in Uganda. Why do some religious people think that they can hate gay people and still preach to them to convert? For real, people don't care what you know until they know that you care about them. You get what I'm saying? How do you justify killing a human being in the name of you are fighting for God? Please, let's talk about this in the comment section. I really want to know what you guys have to say about this because it's quite disturbing to me that people will celebrate killing other human beings that you did not create. Anyway, you guys now don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So just like so many of you, I was shocked to hear that the African Union Ambassador to the United States, Dr. Arikana Chihambori Kwao, was fired by the Chairman of African Union. I'm like, wait, what? What just happened? Like, seriously, like, what the heck? So the Chairman of AU right now is former Prime Minister of Chad, that is Musa Faki Mohammed, a lawyer ally of President Idris Deby, when both of them are lawyer allies of France. And this is unacceptable. I mean, I've never seen any African official boldly speak out about the atrocities of colonization not just in the past but she speaks out about the ongoing colonization of French speaking African countries. France falls to the francophone and I hate that terminology. There is no such thing as francophone, anglophone. They made it up 14 of those countries. They said in order for you to get your independence from us you must sign this document. We are talking about giving you independence but sign this pact for the continuation of colonization in a different format. I mean, is she lying? She also talks about how all these French-speaking African countries are still spending the colonial CFA franc by the French Treasury. They don't even spend that in France anymore. And in all these countries, they are still paying taxes to France. First, France said, you see, you monkeys, you don't know how to manage your money. We're going to demand that you deposit 85% of your bank reserves. Deposit those funds in the French stock market. Today, as we speak, the latest figures are saying for every 14 billion that France invests in the stock market from Africa, they are, they are realizing upwards of 300 billion in return. Is the woman lying? Is she not telling the truth? As in, so when news broke that she was fired, people believe that it's because of her own apologetic stand against the atrocities of France in Africa. You know, a lot of people thought now that they have a new and a younger president in France, that Francophone countries would finally be free. Uh -uh -uh. I don't know if you've noticed, but so many of the Francophone countries in Africa are not doing well at all. The president of Togo has refused to leave. Look at Pobia of Cameroon. He's killing his own people. You think France didn't know what's happening? If France was trying to help the people of Cameroon, by now, Pobia would have been forced to step down. They didn't even condemn what's happening in Cameroon. And the list goes on. Look at the unrest in the Democratic Republic of Congo. It's heartbreaking that even the new French president is not helping. Meanwhile, her boss, the chairman of the AU, is the loyalist of France. I mean, who starts a termination letter with, I have the honor to inform you that you have been fired. What, what kind of honor? Did you read that termination letter? What kind of honor is that? Please sign the petition to have her reinstated. About 20,000 people have signed that petition, and the same petition is also asking for her boss to be removed. Mm -hmm. This woman is doing really well in her job, and she's representing the interests of Africans. She's very articulate, well-educated. She's actually a medical doctor and an activist, of course, and she's a public speaker, an educator, a diplomat, a founder of medical clinics, and an entrepreneur. She's originally from Zimbabwe, first generation immigrant to the United States, and she's the CEO and founder of Bell Family Medical Center here in the US. So let's not allow them to get away with this. Please sign the petition. It's still a developing story, so we'll keep you guys posted on what's happening. You guys don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So if you live in Atlanta, Georgia, your girl will be the MC at the 7th Annual African Arts and Cultural Festival organized by the Global Women Chamber of Commerce, taking place on the 2nd and the 3rd of November. The 3rd is when I MC O'Shea, and this will take place at the Hilton Atlanta Marietta Hotel. So get your ticket if you're yet to if you're in Atlanta. Yes, Kylo is coming with your girl. If he gets his acts together new, you finally get to meet him live and direct. <coughs> Excuse me. Of course, I will also be there, but I know people 
people are more excited about Mrs. Kaido, which is okay. But you don't forget about me, Dr. Arikana Chihombori, the African Union ambassador will be there live and direct. The same one that they are trying to fire, please forget about her being fired. We're not accepting that. If you admire this woman and you're in Atlanta, this is an opportunity for you to meet her. So she already confirmed that she's coming for this event before this drama of her being fired happened and we are not accepting her termination. No, no, no. We the book and we get it. We are fired by force. You know, I'm really excited about meeting this woman and many other great speakers that will be at this event. So please get your ticket if you're yet to. Also, remember my marriage experience show in Dallas, Texas that I talked about last month? Well, well. Apparently, your girl will also be the MC at that event. <laughs> If you're in Dallas, this is about relationship and it's for everybody. Whether you're searching, whether you're available, unavailable, taking, considering engagement, married for 30 years, divorced, no longer interested in a relationship. Come on out and let's talk. There's gonna be a lot of amazing speakers. And then the evening will be a date night. Oh shit. Of course I'm coming with my date, I beg I beg. <laughs> Even by the way, he's coming with his date. Have you found somebody? You're yeah, still praying. No, don't worry. We are also praying for you. Or maybe you will find somebody at the event. Anyway, I'm really excited. November 16th is a date, my people in Dallas. You guys are doing much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Hey everyone, this is Linda Ayoade with My Experience. I'm so excited that you're gonna to come to the 2019 My Marriage Experience show. It's gonna be bigger and better than ever. We're gonna have amazing guest speakers, panelists. It is going to be a wonderful opportunity to ask real questions and get real answers. We're so excited to have you. And this year is gonna be even bigger and better than ever because we're adding a throwback date night right after the show. We're gonna be playing your favorite hits from the 70s, 80s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s, trust me, you won't want to miss it. Whether you're married, single, engaged, divorced, separated, or even widowed, this show is for you. Alright y'all, it's Viru and I'm keeping it right up here. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're yet to, and don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Until next time, I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out!